Hey YouTube friends and Twitter friends, this video will be about marriage and I'm kind of just going to give my own thoughts on it, but really I think the main thing that is an issue in the church is the spirit of legalism and I'm sure that people think that I have it because I bring up homosexuality, which in regards to that, it's true that if someone doesn't care about the Bible or God, then it really ultimately doesn't matter what they do, and it's not a Christian's place to judge anyone who's a non-Christian because if they don't care about living up to God's standards, then it really doesn't matter. But this video is more tailored towards Christians. <clears throat> and I just want to say that, like, I don't know. I feel like a lot of life isn't black and white. I feel like there's a lot of gray areas. And that was a concept that my high school English teacher made me think about, you know. Um, he said that to me when I was in high school. I would meet with him after school sometimes talking about my essays. And we were just talking about life, you know, and he was just like, you know, there's a lot of gray areas in life. It's not black and white. And I was like thinking, okay, I'm going to keep that in mind. And then <clears throat> about nine years ago, I met a guy and um, he was technically still married to his ex-wife, but... The main reason was because he didn't have money to divorce her and she wasn't really cooperative in divorcing him, even though she didn't want to be with him anymore. Anyways, we ended up living together for two years, for two years until he died. Um, he died from drinking too much and being on medication. But through that time, I felt totally okay in my faith being with him because we loved each other and, you know, we considered ourselves married which I know that some people would be like, well, that's ridiculous. How can you just consider yourself married? <laughs> but all I have to say about that <coughs> is I just went for a walk and I just kind of had a thought that kind of was a thought that my dad passed down to me. <clears throat> and, you know, like one time my dad was like, you know, marriage isn't just a piece of paper. And at the time I was really shocked that he would say that because I always thought my dad was a Christian, but he was living with a woman and I disapproved. And then there were various times where my brother was living with girls and I was disapproving. But that was really just a Pharisee spirit because it's like, well, first of all, there's the verse, you know, he who is without sin cast the first stone. And it's not like I could say I was perfect. I had had boyfriends and stuff. So, yeah, it's kind of like silly when anyone tries to control or judge or dictate the way someone else should live their life because we all have our own path to live. And you know, there's that phrase, like, you won't understand someone until you walk a mile in their shoes. And that's very true. And then currently, I have a kind of a crazy situation where technically, I'm still married to my ex-husband. And but we've been separated for about six months. Um, but, you know, I feel like, or at least before, I felt like if he had the money to divorce me, he would have. Um, for no particular reason other than that Satan, I think, was trying to split us up and mess up our marriage, and he did. <clears throat> and currently I have a boyfriend who I love very much, and um, I just feel like, I feel like I just had an epiphany that, like, you know, marriage really isn't just a piece of paper. It's loving each other and serving each other, and there's plenty of people who are legally married and they have the piece of paper, but they don't love each other. They hate each other and they don't serve each other. And how can that be, how can it be said that that's marriage? I mean, I don't know. It's just weird. I've seen a lot of bad marriages where people, the two people don't really seem to love each other <clears throat> and there's no friendship and no passion and no unity. So then it's like, how is that marriage? You know, I don't know. To me, marriage is like serving each other and having each other's back and looking out for each other and really caring about each other, you know? And, like, things just don't last forever. Like, in our modern culture, I think it's just really hard for people to stay married because there's just so much corruption. For one, pornography is probably the number one reason why marriages don't last forever now. Like, in my grandparents' generation, you know, my grandparents were married for, like, 60 years and the funny thing about that, though, is that one time I was cleaning out one of my grandparents' houses. They had, like, five houses. And I saw, I found some porn magazines that, not that I looked at them, but I found them that my grandpa had had in his tool shed, in his workshop. So, I mean, porn has always been an issue 
you know, it's always created problems for marriages. Um, but for sure now in our modern day, it's just so accessible, you know, any man or woman, I guess some women struggle with porn, but mainly men can access porn at any time. And to me, that counts as cheating and that counts as unfaithfulness. So when that happens, like the, the two people should not stay married because that's not, you know, that's breaking the covenant of marriage. Like if you're looking at another naked woman, it's the same as cheating and committing adultery. So there's no reason to stay married after that. Of course, there are cases where marriages reconcile and people forgive. <clears throat> and I think that's a case by case basis on when, you know, the spouse should be forgiving or when they shouldn't. It's really hard to say. Um, you don't want to just be a doormat and put up with anything and everything. So it's kind of tricky. Um, I mean, marriage in general is tricky. Love, relationships, um, you know, knowing how long to stick it out or when it should be over or what is okay and what's not okay. What should you put up with? What should you not put up with? Obviously, like physical abuse, you know, if anyone is physically abusive to their spouse, if they're getting physical, physically abused, they should at least separate and probably divorce. Um, but then it's not just physical abuse that's a problem. It's also emotional and mental abuse, which is what I was experiencing with my ex-husband. You know, he was just really controlling and restrictive and um, paranoid and always worried about you know, other guys liking me or wanting me or I don't know. But anyways, it just came out of insecurity, you know, that I think that he just felt like he didn't deserve me and he was afraid that some other guy would steal me. So anyways, he just got really um, controlling and mentally and verbally abusive. So that's really why we separated. And uh, so, you know, there are cases like that where it's just like, it's not healthy for two people to stay together, and in those cases, you probably should move on. But then you have the whole legality of it, and it's tricky. Like, in Bible times, when people divorced, usually I guess it was the man who would want to divorce the wife, and he would just give her a piece of paper. Like, in the Bible, that's biblically how they would divorce. He would just, like, fill out some piece of paper and give it to her and send her out of his house for whatever reason. I don't know if she didn't cook for him enough or didn't have sex with him enough. I don't know what, <laughs> but you know, then Jesus says, you know, the Pharisees are like, oh, well, in the Bible, it says that, you know, a man can divorce his wife. And Jesus says, well, that's because of the hardness of your hearts that that was allowed. But Jesus says, you know, what God is joined together, let no man separate. So that is a good verse about marriage that, you know, it really, ideally it should be forever. But in the case of Physical, emotional, or mental abuse, you should at least separate and think about things and think about what you're willing to deal with um, on a long-term basis. And if, think about, you know, if that person's good for you, if you should try moving on and being with another person. And another applicable verse in Corinthians, there's a passage about marriage, which I could read. I have about a minute left in my video. But it talks about if... If, you know, if you feel like you're unequally yoked, and that's really a hard call to make because it's kind of hard to tell for sure when someone's Christian or not, but it says, if an unbeliever leaves, the believer is not bound in such circumstances, God has called you to peace. <sighs> Principles in marriage. Yeah. All right. First Corinthians 7. Okay, it says, a husband is not to divorce his wife, but um, to the rest I, not the Lord, say, if any brother has a wife who does not believe, and she is willing to live with him, let him not divorce her. And a woman who has a husband who does not believe, if he is willing to live with her, let her not divorce him. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife. But if the unbeliever departs, let him depart. A brother or a sister is not under bondage in such cases, but God has called us to peace. For how do you know a wife whether you will save your husband? Or how do you know a husband whether you will save your wife? So, but then that verse gets kind of tricky because then it's like, well, how do you make that call on if someone is Christian or not? Basically, if they're exhibiting the fruit of the Spirit, then they're saved. You know, if they're exhibiting love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control, Jesus said, you shall know them by their fruit. 
But if they're being physically, emotionally, or mentally abusive, then they're not exhibiting the fruit of the Spirit, in which case they're not saved. Either they were never saved, or I happen to hold to belief that you can lose your salvation. Um, and it's really, it's really a tricky thing to diagnose for anyone. I mean, kind of for ourselves. I'm pretty sure that I'm saved. I'm like 100% sure that I'm going to go to heaven when I die. But for some reason, a lot of people don't seem to know. But I feel like if you're saved, you should know that you're saved. Um, for some reason, my ex-husband never seemed to know for sure if he was saved or not. So, But I really think, like, yeah, if you're truly saved, you're going to know that you're saved. Um, you're just going to know it the same way that you know that you have blue eyes or, you know, that you have brown hair. It's just going to be part of your identity you're just going to know that that's true about you, like that it's a fact that you're a Christian and that you're saved and that you're going to go to heaven when you die. You know, I, I know that for myself beyond a shadow of doubt, and I, nobody could convince me of otherwise. <clears throat> so, anyways, I pray this video blessed you all. I pray you learned something, and I pray that it opened your mind and your perspective a little bit about life. You know, don't have a spirit of legalism. Don't have a spirit of judging, for the most part. You know, it's good to challenge other people Iron as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. But look at yourself before you point the finger at someone else's life and try and judge them because everybody has their own path to live and to walk. And, you know, it's by God's grace that we're saved. And one thought I had about, you know, who who does God decide to save? None of us really know because none of us know how much grace God is willing to have for a person, you know, how much God is willing to forgive a person. So ultimately, obviously, God is the judge, and only God knows who's saved, who will be saved, who is saved. So keep that in mind, too. And if you are saved, I pretty much guarantee that you will know that you're saved. So if you don't know that you're saved, then uh, I recommend that you read the Bible more and pray more and listen to some worship music. <clears throat> and, uh, yeah, just really seek God, you know. God says, if you seek me, you will find me. So if you feel like, if you don't feel like God is with you 24-7, then, you know, you just need to seek him more. So I pray that you all well. God loves you. Have a great day. God bless.